Izzy, we, we're actually rolling right now. Okay. And today is October, oh, October, God. August 2nd, 2018, and we're in Skokie, Illinois, at the house of? Izzy Weinzweig. Izzy Weinzweig. Izzy, your, your full name is? Avram Israel Weinzweig. And where and when were you born? I was born in Toronto in Canada in 1926. In 19, when in 1926? What month? What month? Uh, good question. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, doesn't matter. April 22nd? Yes. Which is a very famous day in history. It is? It's the day that Lenin from Russia was born. Oh. It's also the day I was born. Also the day you were born. 1926, correct? Correct. 1900 in Toronto. Where in Toronto were you born? Uh, I was born in the hospital, I think the general hospital in Toronto. What neighborhood did you grow up in? Uh, an area around south of Bloor and uh, west uh, or Bathurst. West of Bathurst. What was the name of the neighborhood? Did it have a name? No. What kind of neighborhood was it? Well, it was a Jewish neighborhood yeah. in, on our street. And then next to that was a, a, a not so friendly Goyish neighborhood. Goyish as in Irish, Polish, Italian? Uh, I don't know what they were. Uh, I could have been Polish, but I don't, I'm not sure. And when you say not friendly, what do you mean? We would get into fights. And if you have to go through that area, you had to be prepared to fight your way through. Did you experience any of this firsthand? Yes, sir. quite a few times. Uh, I was one who never gave in, so I would often get beaten up quite badly because they would usually come in groups. And uh, there were times when I was so badly beaten that I was lying down on the ground and uh, eventually, I somebody helped me get up, and I got home. But uh, I outgrew that. Did, did they break anything, or was it like? Uh... No, no. They just gave me a rough time. They would beat me, and I was I was little, so that was a, a great advantage for them. To pick but on somebody little. they were right. older than you. Huh? They were older. Yeah, but I was a, a, a stubborn guy, so I would look at me. Okay. Not at the camera. Okay. Yeah. I would make sure that they remembered that they fought with me once, and then they'd leave me alone because I would fight back very violently until. So that I'd get beaten badly, and I'd be lying on the street. Uh, but they only did that once. What kind of home do you come from? My parents were from Poland, and uh, my father in particular was an activist in Poland, and he fought in the underground against the Nazis. No, against the Russians. And, against the Russians, yeah. And uh, my, I'm blind in one eye, and my mother, would, when I'd get into a fight, she said, you shouldn't fight, you should, because you have only one eye. You were born like that? Yeah. With one bad eye? Yeah. Com are you completely blind in that eye? Pretty much. Pretty much. I can sort of... And it's been like that your whole life? Yeah. Are you the eldest or the youngest children or...? I'm the second oldest. Okay. There were four children. 
uh, the youngest was a girl, and then I had a younger brother who was five years younger than me, and then an older brother who was two years older than me. And you said your father was an activist in Poland. Yes. Where did he come from in Poland? Do you know? He came from uh, Celts. Celts. Yeah. Do you know where that is? Uh, roughly, geographically in Poland? I think it's in the southern part of Poland. Galicia. But, yeah. So uh, my mother was from Ostrovitz. Or as the Jews would say, Ostrovitz. Where's that? In Poland. In Poland. Yeah. Now, when you mean that your father was an activist, was he a... Polish national activist or a Jewish activist? A Jewish activist. What, what, uh, what, uh, activi what part of the political spectrum was he identified with? Uh, probably the left, but I don't remember for sure. Shomer Tzair, Poalitzion. Poalitzion. Was he religious? A what? Was he religious, your father? Uh, not really. Not my if mother was. Not if he was left wing. No, my mother was, and he went along with what she did. So, where did your parents meet? In Poland or in, in Poland? In Poland. Yeah. Were they married in Poland? Yes. And then they immigrated. Right. To my Canada. older brother, who was two years older than me, was actually born in Poland. So, in the house, you spoke Yiddish. Yes. Is that your mother tongue, English and Yiddish? Pretty much, and Hebrew. And Hebrew. Yeah, but, uh, and, and some French. <laughs> Canadian French. Right. Right? Which is debatable if that's really French or not, but that's another tongue. Oh, that's, that's sacrilege. Yeah. So, um, growing up in Toronto, you grew up in a house, do you guys keep kosher in the house? Yes. Keep the Sabbath? Yes. And uh, I would go to shul uh, every Friday night in Shabbat. And uh, I used to daven every morning. Really? Yeah. Did you so, go to public school or to a Jewish school? I went to a public school. And then after uh, the afternoon, I went to a, uh, a Jewish school. So he did, was school. When did you have time to play as a kid? You're always we managed school. fine. Yeah? Yeah. And um, so you go to, you go to, so every day after school you go to Hebrew school. Right. For how long? Two years, two hours. Two hours. Yeah. Okay, like I that. think at first I went right, after, right from school to Hebrew school. And then as I got into more advanced grades, I would go at six. So I'd go home have something to eat, and then I'd go to Hebrew school. Can you tell me the name of the congregation that you guys belong to in Toronto? Do you remember the name of the shul? Uh, it was the... Uh, it, it was the, uh, the Talmud, it's from the Talmud Torah. I don't remember the exact name of it. I don't even know if it had a name, but... And it was separated, men and women? Yes. yes. Pretty much. It was an orthodox. What did your father do? My father was a poster. Poster. Yeah, and he used to make custom furniture. At home, or he had a. He had a... Well, he had. We had a shop in our house. There was an addition built on, with like a. It was a, like a front store kind of. It was. Uh, there was a front store, but this was in the back. It, Where he would build. It was built. So, so that, he, was, he, had ta he was a talented guy with his hands. Yeah, oh, very. Yeah, he could do anything. And that's what he did. And yeah. he, he was able to support the family? Yes. He, we, he used to do custom upholstering and stuff like that. And we would um, do custom drapes. And I, Would you help your father? Would you work uh, with him? Of course. Yeah. I learned to be able to upholster, and I could make drapes. And so I was talented in that respect. <laughs> but uh, I, my parents were re an assistant that I stay in school, and I did. 
and I got a PhD from Toronto. So and I was a professor in Illinois for many, many years. For mathematics. Yes. Okay, we'll get to that. Um, so you were born in 1926. Right. And um, you go to public school. Yes. You go to Hebrew school. Yes. Um, and in the house that you grew up in, is there a conversation about Zionism? Is there, is there an aware? Is there the tzedakah box? Is, like, is there an awareness? Of yes, very much so. My uh, parents were Zionists, and when uh, we were involved in, in collecting guns for Israel, wait, wait, we're, we're not there yet. Okay. I'm talking, okay, that's... Okay. Well, they were, I was, you know, uh, brought up as a Zionist and support and was a member of the... Uh, did you go to a youth movement? Yes. Which youth movement did you go Shomer to? Shomer Sayer, I think, or it was the, the, the Habonim had a... Habonim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is affiliated with Haganah and yeah, and, uh, and all those uh, all those right Habanim. Yeah. yeah, and I was in the, I I went to have to the Haganah, and I in uh, when you know the fighting broke out. We're going to get to that. In okay, a second. we're going to get to that. In 1939, you are. 13 years old. Right. You have your bar mitzvah. Right. World War II breaks out. Right. Canada is immediately right. in, not right. like the United States. Right. Do you remember this? Like, not to, just do you remember, like, it, people talking about it? Yeah. And war and yeah. And, you know, we were very much in, uh, aware of the war, and we were very much aware of the Jews in the war, so... Well, you still have family, I'm sure, in Poland that are that are there. Uh, I Cousins, think... Cousins, uncles, aunts. I don't remember if there, if I had relatives in Poland, but uh, I get... Yes, I did have some relatives, not close relatives, but some more distant relatives, and I met them when I, in Poland. When were you in Poland? Uh, I was in Poland for the first time in, I don't remember the dates, but it was, I guess I was, was I at the university already? So it could have been when I was at the university already. So that was in the 19, God, I don't remember. Okay, okay. So when the war breaks out, Canada is immediately in the war. In the war. You're 13, of course. You're too young. Right. You're in. You're in. You're in middle school. Right. Is there any? Is there any discussion in the house about the situation of European Jewry? Very much. Can you elaborate on that? Well, my parents had some relatives who were still in Poland, and there was concern about them, and. Uh, we talked a great deal in the house about what was going on with the Jews in Europe. And uh, whatever we could do, we would do. So uh, I was involved with the Haganah. But this, that was later. I'm talking about during the war, during the Second World War. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, we all, uh, you know, one we would get arms from the Canadian army. And not that they gave them to us, but we got arms from the Canadian army. We would basically steal arms from the Canadian army and uh, smuggle them to the Jews in Palestine. Okay, so. That's during the War of Independence. 
and earlier. And a little bit earlier. Okay, I'm get, okay. You're, you're speeding a little bit for me. Okay. Okay. During the war, the war, the war ends in 1945. Okay. Okay, you're, you are, okay, actually in 1944, you're 18. Okay. And you finish high school, is that correct? Something like that, yes. Uh, do, you, do, you go, do you go to college immediately, or yes. what's, what's the plan? I went to the university. The University of? Toronto. Majoring in? Physics. Physics. The war is over. It's very clear what happened with the genocide of the, of the Jewish people and the Holocaust. How does that impact you? I volunteered to go to Palestine and work to on uh, the Aliyah Bet, you know, getting Jews out of Europe into uh, uh, Palestine. And uh, some of, I had relatives who were impacted by this, who were still in Poland. And uh, it was a very personal experience for me. You know. How do you come up with the idea? You talked about that you were smuggling weapons. You were yeah. stealing weapons. From the Canadian who, Army. Who, who, gave, who authorized you to do this? Was it, were there Haganah members in Toronto? Yeah, yeah. It was from Haganah in Toronto. I was involved right away. I got involved. And when, While you were in high school or in college? Uh, both. Both. Uh, and uh, so we had to get... We, we managed to steal weapons from the Canadian Army. How? Tell me, how, how, how do you do this? Well, one of the tricks, we would have come with a truck and uh, papers that were fake, and we had to transfer some weapons. Who gave you the papers? Some of the people in the Haganah. And uh, we would drive a truck to a base, present the papers, load the truck up, and uh, drive off, and then we would disappear. And we had basically set up a base in a camp, a, Hab a Habanim camp outside of Toronto, in a barn there where we would bring the weapons and then we would pack them up and ship them to Palestine. Now, you would, you would take them apart, right? You'd take the weapons apart? Not. Really, not that I remember. Well, I guess if when we had to, mostly we used Bren guns. Those are big guns. Huh? Those are big. Well, they're not so big. No, a Bren? A Bren gun is about as big as a Sten gun, a little okay. bigger. Okay. Bigger than a Sten gun. We had Sten guns and Bren guns because those were easy to, to get. And then we would... Uh, one trick I remember we we were going we were making a movie, and uh, the Canadian Army cooperated with us. Who's we? Uh, the Haganah. Making a movie? Yeah, that was our access, and we'd go to. Uh, that was the. That's why you needed the guns. Right, and so we would borrow these guns and weapons and uh, we were supposed to stay within a certain area so but somehow rather we lost uh, we weren't very good in geography so we got lost we got lost and, and they, the weapons got lost too right and we and the weapons disappeared how long were you doing this for uh, i think a couple of years when i was in college i did that and uh Let's see. It was one of these things where we just moved these weapons. We would get, do something. I remember one trick was to uh, have a parade or something like that. And we would get the, the Canadian weapons just beyond part of the parade. It was a patriotic thing. 
and then we would get lost <laughs> with the weapons, and uh, we'd end up at a camp outside of Toronto, and then from there we would ship them across to the Jews of Palestine. Where, where would you, let's say you had a box of a thousand guns, okay? Okay. You grease them up, everything. Yeah. You got them in, in two boxes. Where do you take these boxes? Well, it was very highly organized. You know, we would take the boxes. First of all, we would get the guns and we'd go to, oh, there was a Habanim camp. And that's basically the base from which we operated. Outside of Toronto. Outside of Toronto, yes. And then uh, from the base in this camp, they would get shipped across, disguised in various forms. In trucks or something? In, in crates. In crates, which were on trucks. Right. Right? Right. And where would the trucks go to? Uh, they'd go to the port, and they'd load the stuff onto ships which would then go to Palestine and uh, right. unload there. And if you got caught, what would happen to you? Go to jail for I don't know how long, but I never got caught. And were you working, were you doing this weapon, this smuggling weapons with the same guys throughout the whole period? Was it, was it, I mean, did your parents know what you were doing? I think my parents had an idea of what I was doing and uh, only insisted that I should be careful, which I was. And uh, I, we had a group from mostly the Habanim in Toronto, and we would get the weapons from the Canadian Army and then put a, take them to a camp, and then we would pack them up and ship them no. I, yeah. And and as various things, not as weapons, of course, to the Jews of Palestine. Did you guys have any affiliation while you were in Canada with um, the revis revisionist? No, I didn't. Uh, were, were there any there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was with the Haganah yeah. more, so. Uh, and basically, we would, uh, you know, w it was relatively easy to get weapons at that time because the Canadian Army had a, a lot of weapons which they were getting rid of. But the idea was that they were not to be used as weapons. So when we picked up these machine guns from the Canadian Army, the understanding was that you broke the firing pin so they wouldn't be used as weapons. But I'm not very good at engineering, so I didn't know what a firing pin was, and so we never broke the firing pins, of course. I mean, we basically took these weapons, packed them up, and Actually, we would smuggle them. We would there'd be machines that were you know purchased by some kibbutz in Palestine, and we would pack the weapons with the machines and uh, get them across. And one time, there were some of the uh, guys who you know loaded the stuff on the ships were aware that this was going, got, became aware that this was going on and were not very friendly. And they arranged to have one of these grates dropped and it opened up. And then, of course, the weapons were exposed. And, there was and what a, happened? Well, there was a big, uh, hullabaloo in Toronto and the newspapers, uh, weapons smuggling ring uncovered, and then it died down. And we continued <laughs> to, you know, send stuff. When do you decide 
to go to Palestine? Uh, when I, I think I was in college and uh, I decided that, you know, they were recruiting people. And so I went, I volunteered, and my parents were not thrilled with the idea. In fact, I asked my mother at one point, what would you do if you were in my position? And her answer was exactly what you're doing. And if you were in my position, you'd be doing exactly what I'm doing. So. Oh, it's my daughter. I'll stop with her. What your mother said to you, basically, I would do the same, but if you were my. Right. She flipped it around on you, basically. Yeah. Um, is there like an office besides the farm outside of Toronto? Is there like a place where the Haganah is sitting in Toronto where they have representatives or kind of hush ha? Uh, I don't remember. I, I, I was approached by people from the Haganah. At the university? I was at the university already. They, no, but where did they approach you? Oh, where? in Toronto. It just, uh, you know, I was involved in the Zionist movement, so I was approached there and uh, asked if I wanted to participate, and I said yes. And so I got involved with uh, getting guns from the Canadian Army. So they knew you already? They trusted you? Oh, yeah. Not the Canadian Army. No, the Haganah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Do you remember any names of the operatives there, or like any names of the people that... There was a... Oh, God, I can't remember. Take your time. I'm trying to remember. Uh, oh, God. There's one guy in particular who was is sort of involved in the... And I'm uh, trying to remember his name. He was a Sabra. No, he was born in Toronto. Born in Toronto. Yeah. And uh, I guess he was sort of the one who recruited me, but I can't remember his What did name. he say to you? What did he say to you? Well, he, I was involved in the Zionist he was, movement. He was gun smuggling. And, and, and he said, you know, you want to do more? And I mean, I knew there was this going on. He asked me if I was interested in working in the project, I think it was called. And I said yes. And then I got involved in the smuggling of these guns. From, and we would smuggle them from Toronto to Buffalo. And then from there... To New York City. To New York, and then they'd go overseas. Yeah. Yeah. But... Uh, Listen, uh, smuggling weapons across an international border, you've got to have some balls to do that. <laughs> well, it was... There's one thing about stealing <laughs> weapons, but smuggling through them between the United States and Canada, oh, that's... Yeah. Uh, well, we had our, tech, our tricks. What were uh, your tricks? We would load them into... Uh, we had crates of these parts and put them into cars, into the trunks of cars, and they would just drive across the border. And they never bothered, you know, they just search, they, they see these crates, and they say, what are they? And we had some excuse, and that was it. it was, uh, the border was fairly open, yeah. so it wasn't a problem. So when you decide that you're going to Palestine, what do they what does the Haganah in Toronto tell you that you're going to be doing? Uh, I guess I, they just, I knew that I was going to end up in fighting because that was the purpose of going. What year is it right now? What year do you go to Palestine? This was already 47, 48. Okay, let's put it this way. Where are you 
on November 29th, 1947, when the UN partitions Palestine. Where were you? Do you remember where you were? I think I was in Toronto. In Toronto. And uh, I, I went to Palestine. I guess I was trying to figure out. I was at the university already. Mm -hmm. And I went. Uh, you know, so you went from Toronto, Toronto to New York City? To Buffalo. I'm not talking about the smuggling weapons. I'm talking uh -oh. about Ali Abed. Oh, okay, it went from Toronto, I think, to New York City. To New York City, you took a train? Oh, yeah, I took a train. Are you alone? Are you by yourself? No, I'm with a couple of other guys. Who are doing the same thing that you're right, doing. Right, right. And you say goodbye to your parents? Yes. They know where you're going? Pretty good, yeah. much. Uh, I remember once my mother, and I talked to my mother and I said, she was very upset with what you I said, Mom, what would you do if you were in my place? And she said, exactly what you're doing. If you were in my place, you'd be doing exactly what I'm doing which was, she was not very thrilled with the idea because she knew that it was a dangerous thing. So you go from Toronto to New York? Toronto what to... What happens in New York? We were uh, sent on a ship. Uh, there were ships that left from New York to Palestine and uh, they would get you on one of these ships and you, You'd go to Palestine and... How long were you in New York for? Oh, about a week. About a week. Yeah. Do you remember... Now, the ship that you go on to Palestine, is it like a, a cruiser, a line cruiser, or is it like a beat-up little sh ship? The one I was on was not a particularly uh, good... Sh it was an old ship. Do you remember it, the name? Hari, I think it was. Hari? Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, it's sort of funny because there were some guys who were going with me and one, a couple of these guys went on to Queen Mary. <laughs> and, uh, but I was lucky enough, I went on this cruddy old ship. Was it old? Yes. And it, when you, so you sail from New York to? To Haifa. Directly? Yeah. Direct. I think so. You don't stop in Marseille. You don't pick up refugees. Oh, I think actually I went from Marseille on a refugee ship, and uh, that's a while ago. Uh, and we, the British, were trying to. So you do pick up refugees on the way in Marseille? Yes. yes. And this is the first time that you're encountering Holocaust survivors, probably. Right. Yes. And, and, do, you and, remember, do you remember it? Do you remember it? Yes. I, 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 it was, you know, I talked to a lot of these people and they talked about what they had been through. And, uh, and of course you spoke Yiddish, so you could yeah, communicate with most of them. I spoke Yiddish with yeah. them. And uh, that worked out well. And then when I got to, I, I went to France. To Marseille, probably. To Marseille. Yeah. And uh, as a tourist, as I recall. And then I got in touch with the Haganah in, 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 in Marseille. Marseille. And uh, I went on one of the ships that went to Palestine. Palestine. So the ship that you left on in New York is not the ship that you arrived in Palestine on? No. 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 The ship I, I arrived in Palestine on left from Marseille. And do you know the name of that ship? Was it called Ha'ari? Yeah. Okay. And it had Holocaust refugees on it. Right. Around how many? Can you recall? I think a thousand? About, I don't remember. 1,200? 800? No. Uh, probably. Uh, well, a thousand, I would guess. Now, do we have a date of when you arrive in Palestine? 
Is it before the Declaration of Independence or after? I think this was just after. Just after? Yeah. Okay. So, I don't remember everything in detail. I understand. So when you arrive in Palestine, the war is, or it's now Israel, the war is on. It's on, it's right. On. I have a question to ask you. Maybe this can help me understand when you got to, to Israel. You've heard of the Altalena. Yes. Were you in Israel when that happened, or was that before you arrived? Um, I think it, it must have been about the time that I arrived. Okay. Because I remember swimming out to the Altalena. Okay. In Tel Aviv. Yeah. It was like if it was there for a year. Yeah. Stuck there. Right. And, and you uh, remember swimming out to it? Yes. For fun, like for you know, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and the thing that was very painful about that was that you they had all kind they had tanks and stuff on the Altalena, which were needed needed, but were useless by the time. Because they, when they set fire to the Altalena, they basically destroyed a lot of military equipment. That's a very hard feeling that you come from Canada to volunteer, and then you come and you find out that Jews are killing Jews. Well, Jews weren't killing Jews so much. Well, the Altalena, I think 20 people were killed there. Right, but that was the British. No, that was that was Ben Gurion. Well, I don't remember now. Yeah. Anyways, when you get off the boat in Haifa, when you get off the boat, oh, yeah, where do you go? What do you do? Who's waiting for you? The Haganah, and they take us to a camp. Uh, Let me guess, Telavinsky. I think so, Telavinsky. Yeah, and. Uh, then I were in the army already, yeah. and uh, I then get transferred to this Hamed, uh, and I was went to the Weizmann Institute in Rehovot. You get transferred to where? To the to Rehovot, to the Weizmann Institute. I was in the army. But I was a physicist, and so they sent me to the Weizmann Institute, where the uh, Chemet had a base What's there. What's Chemet? What does that mean? Chelmada. Chelmada. So, uh, so you're like, so they, so they, because they, they know you have a background uh, in biology. No, in physics. In physics, excuse me. Yes. Excuse me. Excuse me. I take that back. In That's physics. Right. There's a big difference. Right. So they know you have a background in physics. Yes. So they're like, this guy, is, we're not giving him a gun. He's going to the institute. Right. So they basically figured that I was more useful as a physicist than as a, a, a soldier. But I, you know, I had military training there too. And uh, it was an exciting period. How, what did you do there? What, what, what were you doing at the Weizmann Institute? Working on weapons. We develop weapons. And can you can you elaborate? Uh, not really, because it's been a long time. Uh, but I remember uh, we developed a a kind of mortar, okay. uh, which and uh, we did mostly things like. Uh, the mortar we d developed and we built, and uh, weapons like that, not really big weapons. I, although we did, I remember working with some anti-aircraft guns, mm -hmm. which were the long barrels going Very up. long barrels. Yeah. yeah. So I remember those. Uh, but. Oh, I was primarily a, a, as a physicist, so I was 
developing. I, I, I did a lot of work on, uh, what do they call it? Listening devices and uh, tapping into telephone lines. And uh, let's see what else did we do. Twelve weapons, you know, particularly simple magnet weapons. The people that you're working with at the Weizmann Institute, are they mostly Israelis? Yes. There are a few uh, Americans and Canadians, maybe a half a dozen altogether. The rest were all Israelis. And did you guys get along? Was it all? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we would go into tell a, into Rehovot for, uh, for dinner or something like that. No, we got along fine. And are you, are you at the Weizmann Institute until the end of the war? Yes. Uh, I was stationed at the Weizmann Institute, and I worked there, but I was not, I was in the army in Chabad, and so sometimes I, they would take me and I would go out uh, to you know, attack and, and you know, basically to get, take the weapons that we had and sometimes attack uh, Egyptian convoys or... So you would attack an Egyptian convoy? Yeah. And, uh, uh, it was interesting time. And that was to attack or to test the weapons? No, it was to get weapons. We, w we would attack a convoy and then take the weapons, capture the weapons that they had. So you were in combat? Yeah. Do you and, remember where? Yeah. Probably near Fallujah, uh, down south? Down in the south in the Negev. Uh, I wasn't really in a lot of combat. Yeah, but enough to you yeah. know, get your feet wet. Yes. Do you remember any, anything specific about being in combat? Any specific uh, event or battle or uh, experience? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Okay. Take your time. Yeah. I think the uh, idea was that I... I, I was involved in, with a, a group of uh, commandos, actually, and we would go out, particularly in the Negev, and when we uh, would encounter a Jordanian or uh, Egyptian convoy, we would attack. and. Uh, a hit and run sort of thing. We would knock out as many of their vehicles as possible and scoot away. So it was sort of an interesting period of my life. And there was a, 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 a group called Chayota Negev. They were Palmach. Palmach, yeah. yeah. Uh, they were very notorious. Uh, and one of their leading characters was a Machal guy yeah. named David Tapperson. I don't know. Big Don. Huh? He was a big uh, yeah. South African guy, yeah. huge. Yeah. I don't remember. Okay. But I remember serving in the Negev. I, I was not really a combat soldier for very long because of my background. They quickly put me into Khamer and uh, I was involved in developing weapons. So the only time you know, I would use them was to test them out against uh, Egyptians primarily. And did you ever go to the Mahal Club in Tel Aviv? There was a Machal uh, Club. Probably. On Hayer Kohn Street in I, Tel Aviv. Yeah. 
Probably, yeah. Probably. That's where all the Mahal people would meet when they were on leave or whatever right. and yeah. have a beer and eat something. And yeah. it was... It, I vaguely remember. I was... I basically spent more time with the people in Chemed who were Israelis yeah. than I did with the Machalniks. Of course, of course. You were more integrated. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. You were much more integrated with the Sabras. Yeah, I was... So the, when the war ends, where are you? Are you in Rehovot? Yes. 1949? Yes, in Rehovot. You're in Rehovot. Right. And... Uh, I get offered a position there. Of course. And uh, I stay there except that I got very sick. What happened? I had typhoid. Oh. Uh, so I spent uh, about a month or two in the hospital. Where? And uh, I think in Rehoboth or Tel Aviv. I'm not, I don't remember. And then. I went back to Toronto because I was still very weak, and uh, my my parents, my mother, flew in, and uh, she thought that I was killed, that I died. She thought that you were dead. Uh, she thought I was yeah, but I wasn't. I was in the hospital for, I think, a month or two months. In Rehovot. In Tel Aviv. In Tel Aviv. Yeah. She uh, flew in to where? To, to, to Tel Aviv. Your mother flew from Tel Aviv? From she Toronto? She flew from Toronto to Tel Aviv because she heard I was in the hospital. And did, you, did she come see you in the hospital? Of course. And I, wow. <laughs> that, that's not an easy thing to do in 1948, no, 49. No. But my mother was very uh, tough. Did you guys go back together to, to Canada? No, because no. I stayed for a while after I got out of the hospital. I stayed there. How how long did you stay in Israel for after the after the hospital? I think a couple of years. Really? Yeah. Uh, some, I stayed for a while. I worked at the Weizmann Institute. At least I worked in the army at the Weizmann. Were you still in the army? Yes. Uh, when were you it, discharged from the army? Well, I got sick, and I had typhoid, yeah. and I was in the hospital for about a month, and when I got out of the hospital, I was discharged, and I went back to Canada because I was still pretty weak, and uh, that's it. But you said that you stayed in Israel for a few years. Yeah. But I was in the army most of that time, and... I don't understand. I was, came to Israel, and I was in the army. Right. And I was in the army for a year, a year. or so. A year. And then I got the typhoid. Right. Oh. Yeah, and? And... Uh, you went back? I was in the hospital for about a month or so, and then... I went back to Canada, and uh, my mother flew in to, to see you. To see me. So yeah. you, so you flew back to Canada. How long after you were discharged from the army? Oh, I think when I got out of the hospital. You went straight back. I was no. I think I was in Israel recuperating. Recuperating for. Uh, a month or so, yeah. two months. And then you went back. And then I went back to Canada. I was still pretty weak at that time. And when you get back to Canada, do you go back to school or do you...? Uh, I think I went back to school and I, I was in graduate school. And then I got a job there. I did a lot of talking, you know, when I went back to Canada because people about my experiences. 
So it was, a, it was an exciting time, to put it mildly. How did it shape who you are today? How did your experience in the war? Oh, uh, I maintain contacts with people in Israel and I go regularly and uh, I was involved in getting arms from the Canadian Army and then smuggling them across to Palestine. So I was busy. And then you come back to Canada and you do your master's degree? Yes. In physics? In physics, yes. In physics? Yes. And then you continue to do a, a, a PhD? In mathematics, yeah. And also the University of Toronto? Yes. Yes. And uh, then I... I think I taught for a year or two at the University of Toronto. Uh, Did you ever do any, any uh, teaching in Israel after? Or any collaboration? I did collaborations. I did research. I worked with people in Israel. I, I lectured uh, to younger people in Israel. So I was very busy. But it was great. Okay, Izzy, I want to thank you very much for your time. Oh, you're... Is there anything else that we didn't talk about that is important to your story? Is there anything that I missed? Did... I don't know. Did we talk about my experience with the Aliyah Bet when I came to Israel? No. Okay, well, I was involved with, you know, the Habanim in Toronto. And so I just, when I wanted to go, I went, they arranged everything. So I went from Toronto by ship to France. And then from France, I went on a so-called Aliabet ship to Palestine. And uh, we, managed to avoid the British and land. And uh, we, I was taken to some place up north. Uh, I don't remember exactly where it was. And uh, then they realized that I was, a, I was a physicist. So I went into the army as a physicist and went to the Weizmann Institute. That we talked about, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, it, it was an interesting period. There were, you know, a lot of people that I knew at that time who were in the army. And, uh, it, it was exciting. What do you think of what else? We, when I was in, in I went into Hamed, uh, which was their weapons development group, and I did work on uh, mortars. And uh, and other and, and other kinds of like uh, grenades of various kinds. So I worked on developing things like that. And uh, but it was a, a good period. Izzy, I want to thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. And uh, good night. Would I get a copy of this? Yes, you will. Good. That's what we're going to do right now. We're going to. I need you to sign a release form, and you're going to put your address. Okay. And I'm going to get back to Israel in about two months. Oh.